Hello everyone. At the start of 2024, I made a resolution to myself to limit the number of vacuum cleaners I bought, or at least in January, I was, I was trying to do a no by January. That didn't last long. Um, especially when I saw this vintage-ish Miele pop up on eBay for a silly price. Um, I can't remember, 50 something pounds, new in the box. The listing said it was from 1985, although when I zoomed in on the paperwork pictured, it's actually from 1995. So it's still, you know, vintage-ish. It's a brand new unused Miele, model S228i. We can see it here on the box. It's in a, a lovely red color. And this has a 1200 watt motor 56 litres per second, 240m bar. I can't read all the bits because it's uh, it's come off. It's got blowing facility, eco something or other, wide operating radius. I don't know if it's repeated on the other side. No, it's not. So, it's old traditional, old-fashioned Miele box. Let's have a look. I've had a quick look at it, but I've not uh, used it yet, of course. So, ah, let's have a look at the tools first. So, here we have the cleaning tools. Not all of them, because some are stored inside. There'll be a bit of uh, dust on this. It's, I think it's been in the loft, the seller said. So, it's a swivel hose. Swivels at either end, but also swivels in the cleaner. 360 degree swivel. Here's the old-fashioned traditional style Miele handle grip again swivels it swivels here at this joint it also the hose swivels as well got suction relief control there to reduce the suction this is a base model believe it or not a base model Miele because we have two individual friction fit metal ones then we have the standard carpet and floor nozzle. I forgot I'd need some scissors. I might be able to do it with my box cutter. This is sealed up. I've always liked the style of this. I think that's slightly discolored. It looks a bit yellow, doesn't it? I think that should be white. As you can see, metal base plate. Litter pickers, front and back, foot operated pedal, which lowers the brush. And the brush goes all the way around this nozzle, but there is a gap either side for the side suction channels. A roller at the back, you can remove that if it gets tangled up with hairs. I think you just move this lever. I won't do it now, it's a bit stiff, but yes, it can take it off. No parking bracket on this machine. And of course, this predates those EU regulations. So there we go. Now, this is a piece of paperwork. This was bought from Comet. There's a blast from the past. Comet, I think Comet are online, but it's not the same Comet. I think a company's just bought the Comet name. It's not the Comet. I think they originated in Hull. But this particular vacuum cleaner was bought from Comet Store 562 in Leamington Spa, 34 to 40 Bath Street, Royal Leamington Spa, Warwickshire. So obviously that's not there anymore. And they paid cash 109.99. So that's pretty reasonable for a Miele vacuum cleaner. But don't forget, this was 19.95. So they were more expensive on the whole than your standard Electrolux's and Hoover's and the like. And then Dyson came along and started upping the price of vacuum cleaners on the whole. I think it was Dyson basically responsible. They started putting their cleaners at premium prices so other manufacturers followed suit even if they weren't premium products. So I think we have James Dyson to thank for the price of a lot of vacuum cleaners now. Thank you for shopping at Comet. don't think there's anything of any super cover so 
there we have the machine. Warning and safety instructions. Like it, loads of things are dropping out. Showing you how to use it for blowing. Connecting the wands. The accessories. Bag check indicator. What else? Maintenance. Exhaust filter, etc, etc. There we go. Now let me just check something. Yeah, it doesn't actually say. I was always wondered what this button was for. I've got a similar, I've got the deluxe version of this. And um, somebody said, oh, it's for hanging up the hose. I'm not sure. I don't know if it mentions it in the instructions. Anyway, that's the uh, instructions. And then we've got, ooh, new. Something is new. What is new? Replacing the paper dust bag. Uh, it's saying it's got a flap. So possibly the earlier versions of dust bag didn't have the flap that closed off when you removed it. So this is a, an extra addition to the instructions. We've got the Miele guarantee. One year guarantee. Unless you extend it. Still in Abingdon. Miele are still in Abingdon. I don't know if they're in Marcham Road anymore, but I'm sure head office is still in Abingdon Oxen. This is service service centres possibly. It's all in foreign. What's this little card about? A little prepaid first class card. Oh, I can send off for more information. I reckon I could send that now if they're the same address. I could send that off now, tick the boxes and see uh, if I'd get anything sent to me in the post. And then finally, we've got this nice little brochure, the Complete Mila Programme Information Coupon. It's a nice little booklet, or is it? <laughs> Congratulations, blah, blah, blah. Showing some Mila Home Laundry of the time. Mila Dishwasher. Built-in appliances, so when we had white cookers back in the day, that was very 90s, white or sometimes brown. The Miele Kitchen. And finally, towards a healthy future, caring for the environment. There we go. So, right, that's all the blurb. Let's take out the cleaner and have a closer look at it. Here's the cleaner itself, resplendent in ruby red. That's the official colour Miele have given this very 90s slash 80s looking vacuum. It looks very 80s as well. I'm not sure when this style was launched. I think actually no, this style was an 80s style. I've got an ideal home magazine with an advert for the more deluxe version. And I think that's from 83 or 84. So I don't know when this particular style was introduced. It looks very boxy, it looks very 80s. It looks very uh, Montego-ish. You know, the cars of the 80s were quite boxy, weren't they? And so were the vacuums, a lot of them. But this ran, you know, this by 95, when this cleaner was purchased, this probably would have been the bottom of the range and there would have been some more curvier Miele's. Well, there was because I saw some pictures of more curvier Miele vacuum cleaners on that little booklet. So this would have been, they kept an old design as they do even now. You can get sort of older designed Miele's um, in the range at the lower end of the range. They tend to be the ones that are assembled in China now. And of course you've got the, the more deluxe or recent styled machines. So I expect they've been doing this for many years. So this would have been, because there's no um, electronic speed control or anything, pretty basic on off automatic cord rewind. I think this would have been Miele's entry level machine, but still a very good vacuum cleaner if you don't want all the bells and whistles. Let's take a look at the built-in tools. Just have to press this little button here and the lid springs open to reveal a comprehensive set of four cleaning tools, not the usual three or sometimes even two we get with cleaners nowadays, but we've actually got four individual tools, including 
a medium length crevice tool. Whoops. That's your upholstery nozzle there with your litter pickers for your soft furnishings and your curtains, etc. And we've got this dusting brush. Not sure if they're natural or man-made bristles, probably with this base model man-made, not the horsehair or whatever they make them out of on the deluxe ones now. And that does swivel, of course. You can swivel it. I've got dropsy today, folks. I haven't been drinking, honestly, just the coffee. So yeah, that, uh, you have to make sure it's back in that position to fit it into the tool tray. And then we've got the radiator brush that fits onto the end of your crevice tool like that to do down the back. It doesn't fit down. I'm not sure if it'll fit down my radiator, but if you've got those big cast iron old fashioned type radiators, it might go down there. I've never found the need of a radiator brush personally, but the good thing about this machine is it does have the blowing facility. And I find that blowing dust from behind your radiators is far more effective than trying to suck it out. Obviously it does create a bit of a mess, but then you connect the hose to the suction end and uh, remove the dirt you've dislodged. So it's nice to see a blowing feature. I'll show you the blowing feature shortly. So there we have the tools. As I said, it's pretty basic control wise. We just have a foot operated on off switch and a foot operated automatic cord rewind. Been from, oh, that's not good. I didn't realize that when I initially tried this. It doesn't want to lock in position, does it? It's possible that there's a little rubber piece that's perished that, that holds the cord reel. It's too late to complain about it now. I'm sure that's something that can be fixed. So normally cord wheels will have a little sort of break on them and they normally have a little rubber piece on the end that holds you know the reel in the open position when you've pulled out the flex until you press so when you press down this it normally lifts something off the reel that's under tension because there's a little metal coil in there so when you pull it out it coil it tenses up it, it tensions itself that's what i meant to say and then when you press the button it rewinds so that that's yeah never mind i'm sure well oh it's staying in now sometimes these things tend to fix themselves maybe when it's been on and warmed up it might sort of be okay i don't know but yeah it's um clearly needs attention yeah. <laughs> oh dear never mind might as well just let it rewind I'll still be able to use it. I mean, they really have an auto reverse feature on some of their older machines where basically the cleaner would be like this. You'd, you'd flip a little switch next to the cord rewind button and it would allow the cord to go in and out as you use the machine. But it's not supposed to do it on this model. Right, uh, probably, oh no, it's not gonna stay in, is it? Let's just rewind it. We'll look at that at a later date. On the front here, we've got a bag check indicator. You can see a bit of red showing here. I think this is a sort of cylinder that has red on it. And as, as the bag fills, the cylinder sort of moves round and shows more of the red, possibly fluctuates during use. I'm not sure. I don't think it worked on my uh, previous Miele. But anyway, that's there as a guide for you to check the dust bag. And to access the dust bag, just lift this catch and that opens up and stays in place and we've got hg bag here i'm going to use a new bag in this rather than the paper bag didn't really want to close that try and get it out there we are so it does have a flap over it that is supposed to close fully when you pull it out of the machine so it is paper but it's certainly more than one layer it's at least a two layer paper bag and here's the bag compartment we've got a filter here 
There we go, that's it. Air Clean Super Filter. And that goes, that's a pre-motor. There isn't, there is a sort of post-motor filter, but it, they're not, you know, the filtering on these older machines isn't as good as the modern versions. The hose fits into here when you're using the blowing facility. Not sure if it locks in place. That no, seems to actually. Yep, that's locked into position. A bit of play in that. But you do have to press the buttons either side to remove the hose, just like you'd have to remove it when connected to the suction inlet. This is the exhaust filter or filters. We've got a thin layer there and a thicker sponge. Doesn't look like the sponge has perished like they often do. But that seems intact, that seems fine. Easy enough to get something similar if that had perished. It's made of ABS plastic, it says here. It does come out, I don't want to force it. It's held into place by these sort of plastic pins. And that's not really, that needs, yeah, it needs flattening out that, the top part of that filter. There we go. I think I can fit in a modern high clean 3D GN bag into this machine. It's quite a bit smaller, but hopefully it'll maintain the suction better than the paper bag. It does fit in, so as long as when I close the lid, the suction inlet goes over that hole, it will be fine. But yes, it does seem smaller, it does open out a bit. There we go. Yep, yeah, it's in place. Let's close the lid. Yep, yeah, you can't really see it, folks. You can just about you can just about see the blue of the lid of that bag. So, yep, yeah, you can fit modern Miele bags into these older cleaners. This is the underside of the cleaner. So, we've just got one swivel caster at the front and two smooth running wheels at the back. They do have a little bit of a tyre on them, it's not just hard plastic. Let's have a quick look at the rating sticker. This is Miele Type S228i NR2354651A6240 AC 240V 50 to 60 Hz 1100 watts maximum 1200 watt made in Germany. Okie dokie, it's time to switch on. Not bad, not, not very noisy, but not ultra quiet. You can fit the hose, and as you can see, it swivels completely. It is a nice color, it looks lovely on my viewfinder, this, this ruby red, very nice. Let's do the old suction gauge test. I've got it here handy to see what the sealed suction is. So, if you're not a regular viewer of my channel, I'll explain that the suction gauge will measure sealed suction of a vacuum cleaner. It doesn't always indicate performance, just the sealed suction. And as a comparison, a modern pneumatic Henry, very popular cylinder cleaner in the UK, would measure 80 on this gauge and that's I think 620 watts now. This is 11 to 1200 watts. So bear in mind a pneumatic Henry using about half the wattage of this measures 80. So let's see what this Miele measures. The suction gauge peaked at around 92, so yes, this Miele does have more suction power than a modern pneumatic Henry, but then it does use almost twice the electricity. Quite 
quite hard to push, but not too bad. It's giving me a workout though. Maybe two hands are needed. But it's not skipping across the pile. It is remaining flat. It's the pivoted head that's keeping the nozzle flat. To make it easier, I'm going to reduce the suction a bit. comfortable to use it's, it's pretty tall this and you can't adjust because it's obviously it's not telescopic um, it's not uncomfortable for me and of course you've got the, the pivoting head that's a nice nozzle actually even on full power it was hard hard to push but you know it was doable and it's very easy to push now because this is definitely the way to use your Miele it's very quiet too when used in this mode, but obviously it's not going to pick any dirt up. <laughs> but it's uh, very smooth running. I'm wondering if this, I, I don't know if this is 32, I'll check. I'm not sure if this is 32 millimeter fittings on these. I don't think Miele are. I don't know if they are, are they 35 or something. They're not quite the same. Although it looks like a 32. I'll soon find out because it's got a Henry in the background. I'll just see if I can fit a Henry nozzle onto the end of the wand. No, I can't. So I, th I have a feeling that these are 30, could be 35 millimeter diameter. Henry is a 32, which is pretty standard for many vacuums. So if I was to use any other accessories on this other than Miele ones, I would need some sort of adapter. Miele S7, I'd like to introduce you to the Miele Deluxe S228i Air Clean. They look nice together, don't they? A more modern Miele, although sadly discontinued for quite some years now. So, uh, yeah. Still a handsome looking beast. And this is a beast, this cleaner. It's a long time since I made a video of this when I first got it. It's got a few battle scars because this particular finish does take the marks. I mean, the top half is still mint. It's just a, a few scrapes at the bottom. I recently bought a brand new HEPA filter to put in this. Oh, it is a beast though. It's okay on this carpet, but it's still very hard to push. Can't really use it on maximum power on my plush pile. Anyway, the reason we've got this mealer down is to see, we'll take the uh, dusting brush We'll see if we can fit newer Miele attachments to the older machine. Yes, yes, backwards compatible. Take a note, Mr. Dyson. So many Dysons, you, the tools are completely incompatible with each other. So let's uh, pop the wand back. So even without a turbo nozzle, this cleaner it's pretty forgiving on my notoriously difficult to clean plush pile carpet. These oats are out of date, folks. Got some purple sand here. There we go. It's a shame I haven't got any ruby red sand to match. Oh, I'll just use the rest of it and then I can get rid of this plastic container. I can go to recycling now. Right, look, I've made a mess, folks. Oh, I'm like a pig in muck. 
Lovely jubbly. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be doing this, you know, folks. What are you going to do when you grow up, Roger? Oh, I'm going to throw mess all over my living room carpet and rub it in and video it for people to watch on YouTube. What's YouTube? I don't know, it's some new thing that's going to come out on the internet. What's the internet? Oh, I don't know, but it's going to be very popular at some point. Now get back to programming your Sinclair ZX81. Right, there we go. Well, there you go. That's my Miele Deluxe S228i vacuum cleaner bought in 1995. I did regret clicking the buy it now button when I bought this because I was supposed to not be buying anything in January, let alone a Miele. But it was £55 plus postage, so £73 delivered. Brand new, this was £109.99 or whatever. So... It's lost some value, but it's certainly a very capable vacuum cleaner. Even now, you could use this now in a modern home. It would still perform probably better than a modern Miele. For all you legends who have managed to watch the video to the bitter end, I'll treat you with a quick demo of my Miele S7 upright. But until the next video, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon for the next one. Bye for now.